Chapter 4, Applications of Differentiation. We have already investigated some application of derivatives. However, now that you know the differentiation rules, we are in a better position to pursue the applications of differentiation in greater depth. In this chapter, we will learn how derivatives affect the shape of a graph of a function, and in particular, how they help us locate maximum and minimum values of functions. Section 4.1, Maximum and Minimum Values. Many practical problems require us to minimize a cost or maximize an area or somehow find the best possible outcome of a situation. In these situations, we are trying to optimize the outcome. What is the shape of a cereal box that minimizes factoring costs or what ticket prices will maximize revenue for a concert? Definition. A function f has an absolute maximum or global maximum at c if f of c is greater than f of x for all x in d, where d is the domain of f. As you can see right here, this f of 3 is five, equals 5 is the absolute maximum of this function. The number f of c is called the maximum value of f on d. Also, f of s has an absolute minimum at c if f of c is less than or equal to f of x for all x in d. The number f of c is called the minimum value of f on d. f of 6 equals 2 is the smallest value, therefore the minimum value. The maximum and minimum values of f are called the extreme values of f. So find the extreme values of the function represented by the following graph. Max f of 1 equals 5, and min f of 3 equals negative 30. This right here is the same definition on the previous page, just written in mathematical notation. <coughs> the figure below shows the graph of a function p of x with a local maximum at negative 1 and a local maxim minimum at 3. Negative 1 and 3. It appears that at the maximum and minimum points, the tangent lines are horizontal and therefore each has a slope 0. We know that the derivative is the slope of the tangent line. So it appears that the derivative of f at negative 1 equals 0 and at 3 equals 0. What about f of x equals x squared? f of 0 is the absolute and local minimum value of f because x squared is greater than or equal to 0 for all x. This corresponds to the fact that the origin is the lowest point on the parabola. However, there is no highest point on the parabola, so this function does not have a maximum value. Example 3. Suppose f of x equals x cubed. Then the derivative is 3x squared. And the, if we plug in 0, it is 0. Therefore, f of x does not have a max or a min at 0. But the slope of the tangent line at 0 is 0. The extreme value theorem. If f is continuous on a closed interval a, b, then f has both an absolute maximum value, f of c, and an absolute minimum value, f of d, at some number c and d in a, b. So this will be the max and the min, max, min, max, max, min. This function has minimum value at f of 2 equals 0, but no maximum value. This continuous function has no maximum or minimum because there's a hole right here and it is continuous forever up there. Therefore, a function will have local extrema on an interval if f changes from increasing to decreasing, decreasing on the interval is the local max, and increasing on the interval is the local min. There's the definition in mathematical notation.
Fermat's theorem. If f has a local maximum or minimum at c, and if f prime of c exists, then f prime of c equals zero. No, we can't expect to locate extreme values simply by setting f prime of x equal to zero and solving for x. If we do, then that brings us back to the cubic function where at zero the slope was zero, but there was no min or max of that function. Local and absolute. So if we look right here, our local min, our local max, local and absolute min, because this min is lower than this min. And this function is continuous, so there is no absolute max. It goes on, well not that, not that it's continuous, take that back, it extends infinitely in both directions. So if f of x equals x cubed, then f prime of x equals 3x squared, so f prime of 0 equals 0. Therefore, the simple fact that it, f prime of 0 equals 0 doesn't mean that there is a maximum, minimum, so be very careful here. What about f of x equals the absolute value of x? You can't take the derivative, so f of 0 does not exist. Therefore, again, same rules apply. The theorem does suggest that we should at least start looking for extreme values of f at the number c where either f prime of 0 equals 0 or f of c does not exist, such as a corner or vertical tangent on the graph. Definition. A critical number of a function f is the number c in the domain of f such that either f prime of c equals 0 or f prime of c does not exist. So if f has a local maximum or minimum at c, then c is a critical number. If f and of f and c of f of c is called a critical point on the function. Find the critical numbers of this. So the product rule gives the following formula. Now you can set the top and the bottom equal to zero and get the critical numbers to be three halves and zero. To find the absolute value and max, absolute maximum and minimum values of a continuous function f on a closed interval a, b, first find the values of f at the critical numbers of f in a, b, find the values of f at the endpoints of the interval, and the largest value from 1 and 2 is the absolute max value, the smallest is the absolute minimum value. So example 8. Find the absolute maximum and minimum values of this function. So as the rules applied right here, first critical, then endpoints. So I need to take the derivative. I'm going to find the critical points. So I'm going to set this equal to 0. So 3x equals 0 gives me a 0 critical point. x minus 2 equal to 0. I'm going to add the 2 over. That's going to give me a 2 as a critical point. They are both in the interval. And now I'm going to find the endpoints. So f of 0, oh wait. These are the critical numbers, as I just said. We found 0 and 2, so f of 0 equals 1, f of 2 equals negative 3. So 1 and 3 are our criticals. Now I'm going to find the endpoints. f of negative 1 half equals 1 8, and f of 4 equals 17. Therefore, 17 is my highest number, negative 3 is my lowest number. 17 is my absolute max, so f of 4 is the absolute max, and f of 2 is the absolute minimum. Example 6. Sketch the graph of a function f that is continuous on 1 comma 5 with the following properties. I'm going to allow you to do this and bring this to class and we will discuss it. Find an absolute minimum at 1, absolute maximum at 5, local maximum at 2, and a local minimum at, five, at 4. Do your web assignment.